Hi everyone, uh, Gus Shrugs here. I'm coming at you with a demo of a game called Beacon Pines. Uh, Beacon Pines is a Kickstarter game um, that is being developed by Hiding Spot Games. Um, it's a cute and creepy adventure game within a magical storybook. Um, you play as both the reader of the book and the main character. Um, so the unique thing about this game is that um, you actually use these charms to fill in the blanks and change how the story goes. So yeah, um, I backed this game on Kickstarter. Um, really excited to play the demo. The demo is available on Steam and I believe itch.io. Um, they also have a really nice Discord server um, that you can definitely check out as well. Um, you can also follow them on Twitter, um, I believe at Beacon Pines. Um, and uh, yeah, without uh, saying too much more, let's get on into it. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might first appear like many books you've come across, it is far but ordinary. You may therefore have some misunderstandings about its function. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. Chapter 1 Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the humble welcome sign. A young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn. And like you, dear reader, he is here for a reason. So, there's escape, shows you your keyboard controls, um, there's also gamepad controls, you've got find out more which is a link to their socials, exit, resume, and reset save. Okay. So we can use the WASD or the arrows, we can use spacebar. E, C, and B. Okay, let's continue. This is Luca. I love this art style. This art style is so beautiful. It's serene. It's detailed, but not overly detailed. It has like a really cozy vibe to it. Hey, Dad. The morning light filtered through the trees onto the gravestone. How are things going? A gentle rustle of the leaves was the only reply. Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. From here on out, You'll have been gone for longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Me too. Hey Luca. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. I knew I'd find you here. Well, after I banged on your door till your grand finally came. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. And after I checked the pond and climbed up to the treehouse, then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the fresh flowers on the grave and the tears welling in his friend's eyes. 
Oh yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. She's not gone. She's just... not here. Sorry. I meant to say since she went missing. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Okay, Dad. See you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. I don't know why, but the writing for Rolo is somewhat southern, and I don't know if it's like his like farm... Like, I don't know, he just strikes me as like a farm type character. Ah, oh, look at this. So I played this on my stream last night. I only played about 15 minutes of it. Um, Twitch.tv slash Gus Drugs is me. And um, yeah, so I gave it like a little sneak peek um, before I did this recording. So just to try and get, you know, chat hyped for it. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And I think I think chat did too. And they, <laughs> they were like, this game seems right up your alley. So I thought so too. The moment I actually like read about it on Kickstarter, I was, I was so excited. So let's keep going. Oh, <laughs> tickle. I see tickle. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Oh, I love that animation style, that's so cool. Oh, another sneeze. <laughs> that's so cute. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason why I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. You know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. No one has used that building since... Since... Since before the foul harvest. Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. What do you expect to find there? Answers. My mom's out here, out there somewhere. It seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my pa throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got you back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend my first day of summer. Oh. Under the shade of an old straw hat, the scarecrow held a knowing smirk. One of its button eyes had been pecked out by a brash crow, creating the impression of an internal wink. Unnerving, to say the least. I'm not good at voices. I'm gonna, I'm gonna... So I will probably forget how, what voice I'm using for what character. Through the, so if the voices are not consistent, I apologize. I'm not a professional voice actor. I'm not even an amateur voice actor. I'm just... I'm just trying it out, seeing how it goes. Hey, Jack. <laughs> Morning, Jill. Salutations, Dr. Hossenpfeffer III. Oh, that's cute. All right, carry on. 
All right, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you gonna tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your grand smells kind of funny. Suit yourself, I won't be long. In we go. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They have been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. This very house is so cute. I love this style. Like, I don't know, like it's like a pop-up book, kind of? But like it's animated and it's interactive, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Just some dusty knickknacks. Since Gran had moved... Uh, since Gran had moved in the house... Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. I guess Grans have a way of doing that. The drawer was packed with his dad's old baseball card collection. Never got the appeal of collecting things. Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmother obligation. Ponder. That's cute. Look at him just laying on that. He just, that's so cute. And slides off. <laughs> that's so great. Alright. To the upstairs. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. <gasps> Hide. Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Oh, even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Chill. Nice. I wonder if the, like, see how each symbol, there's like a symbol at the top. There's like a moon by Tickle, there's like a heart and, and chill, ponder and hide. I wonder what that is, not a triangle for chill. Guess we'll find out. I don't know, Little notice little things like that. Gran's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed at the situation. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit falling in asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. The controls are really fluid too, like I'm using a keyboard and just like, the controls are really fluid, it's really nice. What's this? Kitchen? Oh, turning on the sink. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener. A mostly empty bottle of glue and some loose string. Junk. Okay. That one didn't have a symbol on it. Weird. Oops. Something has gone wrong in there. I wonder what... Something has gone wrong? 
Is that peach growing another peach? Well, I don't know what I expected. Well, that's cool. I have like multiple dialogue options. I think they meant to say something has gone off in there or something has like spoiled. Not something has gone wrong. Oh my, this is quite exciting indeed. I am now certain that you are the one I have been waiting for all these years. You recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You're about to encounter your very first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. You can use the various charms you have collected to alter events and thus completely rewrite the fate of Beacon Pines. This is no small thing. So step forth, dear reader, and grasp a hold of fate itself. Hop, 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 hop. Oh. In the short time since her arrival, Gran had set about remaking the garden. The wild bushes Luca spent his childhood playing in had been replaced by patches of fresh, fresh soil. Hmm, interesting. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Oh, look at Gran. She's so pretty. Hey, Gran. I'm gonna go hang with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. We were just gonna go heart for the day. Oh, okay. So that's what the little symbols mean. They match what word we can, like what's an acceptable word. Chill, hide, or ponder. I think chill seems pretty fitting. We're just gonna go chill for the day. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on the truth. You boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. Well, make sure you are done chilling in time for supper. Easy. <laughs> Get away with her cane. Impressive. You managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. That is the power of charms. A simple word can change the course of history. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. Chronicle. Press B. It's a tree. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. This conversation with Graham seems, in it seems innocent enough, the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Luca lies to Graham. Oh, so I get like a redo, like I can just choose. We were gonna go ponder for the day. Sure, I'll try that. We were just gonna go ponder for the day. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Um, you know, big stuff, small stuff, medium, Mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with a preponderance of pondering. Huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. <laughs> Shoo. She shoes you with your with her cane. Okay. Cool. That choice seemed okay. Just walk out. A little pitter patter. Pit pat. Anything else to see around here? 
Oh. Come on, come on. He's so excited. Dang it, Rolo. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Oh, if there's a lot of voices, I'm not going to be able to do them. Honestly. <laughs> I'm just kind of hanging out. I don't hear anything. Sleeping. Oh, that pig is sleeping. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. Sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound you. Oh, that's rude. Yep. But my mom said. Yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Did you hear that, Tish? King of nickels. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Not very nice. Hey Luca. Looks like you guys are in a hurry. I'm just keeping an eye on my boat. The SS Mary times. Pretty cute. I'm just <sighs> catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Alright, suit yourself. The beacon beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Good morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about... Well, if it's news you want, young lad, then you've come to the right place. Oh, great. Have you heard about something going on at the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rolla thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm. Rolla ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing. And change is a dangerous animal. Change. Okay, interesting. Hey, Mrs. Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for the summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy to enjoy his summer. Yeah, I guess not. You be safe now. Is nobody, like, concerned that he... Like, that his mother is missing? Oh, this person doesn't look very friendly. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh? Oh, this is getting good. Luca, just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well now I'm just rambling, where were we? Have you seen my idiot brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well, uh, not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Come on, Roxy. Would I lie to you? Luca, wait up. I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be lurking around here. This is one of her favorite places to stand around and be useless. Uh, Rolo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Ro Rolo. Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? Wait, you're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And stupid. And she's right around the corner, isn't she? 
Don't mind me over here. Just, just over here lurking uselessly. Oh hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you slipped out this morning before breakfast. I wasn't hungry. Also, couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Must have slipped my mind. Thanks for letting me know. Anyways, Luke and I have places to eat, so if you don't mind. Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and feed those pigs, or I haul you home myself. Rolo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... chill. It's the only one we have. Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. The sun's shining, and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Aw, oh, rats. I expect a full report about Valentine Place. A full report? So, Fitz. What are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -mm. Duke Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines. Never underestimate what a great man can do on his own. Duke Valentine. A bit much, if you ask me. Rather than abandoned building. I love this art style. It's so nice. We got a book stop. Nun Creed's drugstore. Deals, deals. Luca, my boy. Hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nun Creed. I was just on my way to. I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, uh, that's great, I, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, uh, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go. Okay. Sweeter than jam on any earth. <laughs> oh, so creepy. Can I go this way? No. The phone booth was brand new, part of the town's Beacon Pines Reborn Initiative. It didn't see much use. Oh, we got a beehive over here. I'm assuming all these like construction signs means that it's like either not been fleshed out or it's just not a part of the demo. Oh. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of the Weepwood. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Okay, so what would Rolo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rolo would do. So that he could rule out that option. <laughs> I'm definitely not touching that thing. Hmm. 
there anything to like grab or no? <laughs> Luca knew that if he gave up now, he'd never hear the end of it from Rolo. Well, I wasn't trying to give up. Oh. Oh. Okay, I just pressed E and it threw the mushroom. As sparks flew from the fence, a light at the top of that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. That's two. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. Ooh. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was an unnatural light that glowed gently from the windows, throbbing in time with a low mechanical hum. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. Oh, the water animation? Look at that. The water looked almost diseased. A glowing sludge gathered in blobs at the surface. It flowed slowly into the woods. Maybe I shouldn't run around in it then. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Gross. Locked. Luca thought he heard the faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Hello? Oh. Shit. <laughs> Shit. The heavy steel knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away. I felt a glove hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door into the lab into the green light. Then darkness. This is a story about change. It's the only one I have. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself but it was an all-too-common ending for a denizen of Beacon Pines. The end? Maybe we can change this one, we can go back. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little... <laughs> shit. Make a break for it. This is madness. Ah! <laughs> Did that little shit just kick me? Run all you want, you little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Look at my boy. Hold up a tick. Uh, sorry, Mr. Nuncreed. Kinda in a hurry right now. Sigh. Boy's got too much of his father in him. Ow, 
are we in? A little help? I am the champion. We were racing? Did that road get longer? Like anything ever changes around here? I seem longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I would take advice from a second place. Has that sign always been here? Wait, what? Caution, electric fence. No, that's definitely new. Creepy. How, how are we gonna, how are we gonna get around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. Wh why did you do that? Pa always says you can figure out what the plan was when you're done. Great, what now? Well, I did my part, established that touching the fence is bad. I'm sure you can handle it from here. I'll supervise. From a safe distance. Well, we know that we just have to throw... <clears throat> Whoa, you're a genius. I think that did it. Luca, you never fail to impress. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rolo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out! Dang, Rolo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two crack detectives are on the case. This is crazy. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Check out this puddle. That's not normal. And this hose. Ah oh, man, the door's locked. Try harder. No dice, won't budge. I'm tempted to prove you wrong, but I wouldn't want to embarrass you. Oh well. This dumpster is new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. Can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Are you sure that isn't the hazardous waste? Just help me get in. Rolo. It would be my honor to throw you in the trash. <laughs> wow. Come on, Lady Luck. Oh, dang. So, what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. Hang on, there's more. A good inch of stagnant sludge. <laughs> Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. Are those walkie talkies? Just like Hank Atomic Communicators. Do these actually work? Ground command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic. Ground command, you're incoming five by five. How, um... How are your vital readouts, Hank? Ah, uh, it's getting a little stuffy in here. They're requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. What was that? Someone's coming. Just shut up and give me your hand. I'm trying. Get a better, get a better grip. Scoot over. I'm coming in. He's like blurring. He's like glitching out. Uh, tell me you saw that. Dude, I don't know what I saw. He's coming back, get down. Is 
Is that a body bag? The boys were petrified under the weight of the bag. Okay, I'm not waiting to find out what other crud that thing is going to dump in here today. I think we should make a break for it. Calm down, there's no reason to panic. I'm not panicking! You're panicking! Rolo, calm down. You don't have to keep squeezing my hand so hard. Dude, I am not holding your hand. Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Uh. Ah! 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 <laughs> Chucks the arm out. Nice. I'm beginning to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. If you hear me yell, run. If you don't hear me yell, run. Actually, either way, haul ass. Rolo. Yeah. I'll give you credit. You sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Lucas sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rolo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rolo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. 35, 36, 37. The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rolo, no sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night, throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room, and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Chapter 2 Dead Ends The next morning it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I just finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Hello? Calm down. No, of course it was the right thing to do. Start gathering the folks, I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Uh, not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Fran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstances are you to leave. What? If I am not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But... But nothing. You are to stay here, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll... Stay here until you get back. Good. Ooh, I wonder what happened. Luca stood in silent shock. Had Grant caught him in a lie? Where could she even be going? Well, that was strange. Hmm. 
<laughs> Anything around here? Anything new? I'm wondering if um our friend Rolo went missing. I'm actually kind of worried about that. Oh, a strange sound buzzed in the air. Is that coming from upstairs? Oh, the walkie-talkie. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? Rolo, is that you? Over? Strange. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. Oh. Someone at the door? Okay, okay, coming. Oh shit. Oh, hey Roxy. Is this about me, uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday? Is Rollo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rollo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rollo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weepwood, and then it was late, and we went home. Weepwood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Is there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. If you can think of anything else that might help, let me know. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolo. Gotta find him. Well, where would he have gone? Oh, that poor boy. Yeah, Rolo's parents said he never came home last night. That poor sweet boy. And he's not the kind of kid to run away or anything. Oh dear, that poor sweet little boy. So if you hear anything, please let them know. Of course, I'll let them know if I hear anything. Yikes. You just chillin'? He's still sleeping. Can I go in here? No. Rolo? Sorry, my boy. I haven't seen him since yesterday. I'll be sure to keep an eye out. His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean, Vanish? That's impossible. Oh my. He doesn't even see the danger he's in. Wow. Foreshadowing? Maybe? Of course, why would anything be open in this stupid place? Oh yeah, Miss Nowak usually doesn't get in till after lunch. And you are... Luca Van Horn. You new here? Not by choice. Gotcha. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Lucas shifted his feet uncomfortably. Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? I don't think so. Welp, that sucks. Yeah. 
I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? I'm coming with you. What? This is the first interesting thing that has happened since I got here. Besides, you look like you could use some help. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Kip's hardware went out of business over a year ago. The building had sat vacant ever since. Mrs. Nowak's bookstore was often closed until after lunch. Rummaging through the dusty piles of books was one of Luca's favorite ways to kill time. The phone booth was brand new. We read that. So is there anything new around here? Oh, now there's a keep out sign. Dang, they boarded up the way in. Yeah, but there was... Uh, this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick! Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First, small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool! As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick to the, with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah, it seems dangerous. Oh. Hey, Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Yep. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Ah, oh, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. Uh, she looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we've been properly introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot, Tish. Yep. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once, on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this dud? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... You... Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true, they got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't. Talk. About. My. P family. Haha, <laughs> well look who's grown a backbone now that a girl's around. First, his pops croaked. Then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore. Oof, that's rude. That's harsh. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city. But a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought, well, time to bust out the... Strange or the tickles? Let's go with strange. Let's bust out the strange. <clears throat> All right, Luca, looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence. The only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. It's weird when people don't talk. Yep. Stop being a weirdo. Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense. Wackadoos travel in packs, eh, dud? At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. 
Ah! Oh. Iggy's clothes were drenched in glowing ooze. You jerk! My clothes are ruined! I'm gonna... <clears throat> Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Struggle. Head, I don't, I don't feel so good. Health, oh. Oh shit. I'm sorry, I just... Uh oh. I'm afraid that's the end of this part of the demo. But that doesn't mean there isn't more to discover. Remember, each new charm you found has a special power. Just look to the Chronicle. And don't forget to wishlist and follow to find more cool stuff. Most importantly, if you enjoyed the demo, please tell your friends. Alright, well, I'm sure that there is a couple more things that we could do, um, but why don't you guys go play and find out for yourself, instead of me doing it all for you? Um, yeah, we'll head on back to the very start, and... That was the demo for Beacon Pines. What did you think of it? Comment below and let me know. Hit that like button if you did like it. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we're new here. We're growing our channel. Um, so every little bit counts. And honestly, go play Beacon Pines. I think that they're saying that they want to release it sometimes la sometime later this year. I think maybe in October, November. It looks like a really cool game. It's got some, like, some really good mystery. Um, the playability is nice. The art style is beautiful. I like the concept of these charms. It's kind of a new concept to the, the style of game. And um, the other thing that I really like is that even though it kind of looks, I don't want to say childish, but it almost it has like more of a cute, cozy type atmosphere. It's using a little bit of adult language. It has some adult themes to it. Um, so it it's kind of has a little bit of like that juxtaposition of of being cute and cozy but also like kind of dark and sinister and adult so it's kind of nice i like i like that it's a really cool contrast anyways uh thanks so much for checking us out i hope you have a great day and um yeah we'll see you in the next one bye